now that you know certain things about the extensive intensive property of B or of the certain particles, the system and the control volume, let's go straight into Reynolds transport theorem and one dimensional analysis. Our limitation here, we are looking at one dimension and let's not waste any time because we've got a lot of things to cover. Now, Raymond's Reynolds transport theorem. How, we're going to analyze it in one dimension. So this is the thing we're going to look at and this that we are going in that dimension over here. So let's just get a feel of things by looking at a certain pipe which I've conveniently drawn over here and the control volume and the, and the system of particles. Okay, the control volume on the system. Now, this dotted line over here is what I designate as a control volume. I say again, the control volume is we're analyzing the particles that are inside the control volume and the volume doesn't change. So that is the volume that we're looking at. And by the system analysis that we are analyzing a system of particles as it moves through this pipe. It may go inside the control volume, it may go out, it might go inside and stay there, we don't know. But we are just still limiting our analysis to a system of particles. That's when we do system analysis. And for Reynolds transport theorem, we're going to connect the two. Okay, so now, after, now we start off at a certain time, okay? Time, at time t. At time t, the system of particles is going to coincide with the control volume. So, if I were to draw it, I'm gonna, I'll am i just draw it lightly, okay? So, we start at time t, and we set such that the system of particles coincides with the control volume. As you can see, the system of particles in, is inside the control volume. That's why they coincide. And if they do coincide, obviously the extensive property it has to be the same. So, the extensive property of the system at time t is equal to the extensive property of the control volume at time t. This is what we started out with at time t. The extensive property of both is equal. So now, well, it's not much fun if they're equal, right? And we need to find a theorem to connect the two when they are not equal. So, we'll move on at time t plus a small change in t. And this is where our a real analysis comes in. At a small change in our t plus uh, delta t, the system of particles would be would move over here, right? I hope you can see that. So, as the system of particles started off here, and now it's moved over here, and as you can see now, now they, does, they don't coincide. But our system analysis, we want to analyze the system of particles, but our control volume analysis, we want to stick inside the volume that's given by the dotted line. So let's label some area, uh, area so we can see what, what's going on. Now this area over here, okay, this area over here, we will just call it area 2, or volume 2, because it's three-dimensional. Now this one over here, so this center one over here, which I'll draw a bit darker, this center one, it is called CV minus 1. At the same time, I'll label this one. So let's just take a look about it. Uh, CV, control volume, is the control volume over here. Minus 1, the one over here, we get the, the volume here, that's right. And we just label the volume here as 1. Not a problem. And the volume here is over 2. So that's the small change over here, and this is uh, change, small change in L is equals to the small change in L would be equal to, sorry, yes, it's a V1, V1 and a small change in T, right? V, because the velocity over here is V1. Sorry, I forgot to label that. Okay, what is the velocity? We need to get it a bit clear. The velocity is that, that, that uh, plane of particles that are moving at a certain velocity inside this area over here, right? And um, also, from this part over here, okay, there's going to be another velocity too. Because why? The system of particles started out inside the control volume, so now it's moving that way. Obviously, the velocity of the particles over here will move at V1, the, the, particles, the velocity of the particles over here move at V2. Bearing in mind that V1 and V2 may not be the same. In fact, in most cases, they are not the same. Why? Well, a simple argument. As you can see, this area is much smaller, but this area is much bigger. I'm sorry, yeah, the, the plane area is much bigger. So, obviously, their velocities are going to be different, right? So, there's going to be a small change in L2, and it's given by V2, small change in time. Basic velocity times time to get distance. So, we got everything set up, and now let's go on with our analysis. Now, the next step. Okay, let's just look at, uh, at um, the, the, the extensive property of the system at a certain time plus, uh, at a certain t plus change in t. So the extensive property of the system at t plus change in t is equal to. Now what is this? This value over here, right, extensive property of the system is going to be this thing over here. I hope you can see that. Right? Because at a small change in t or um, delta t after, the system is now moved over here. So what I can say is that this one, using the diagram over there, is going to be this, okay? Add up with this, subtract this. Or if you want to do it in another way, it's going to be, uh, let me just have a quick check, yeah. It's going to be this, the extensive property of the control volume at uh, t plus a small change in t, we are going to subtract 
the excessive property of 1 at uh, t plus a small change in t and we're going to add the extensive property at 2 t plus a small change in t okay let's see whether that, that makes sense okay I, 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 I'm not too sure myself but let's just have a look about it the extensive property of the system at t plus change in t we are at t plus change in t the extensive system oh sorry the system is now here okay so we are taking the the, the extensive property of the control volume, which is basically over here, subtract the one over here, so we got the extensive property over here, and we're gonna add up with the extensive property over here. That is good, okay? That is good. So I hope you follow the chain of analysis. So that is the equation that we have. Now, like I said again, in dealing with fluid mechanics or for principles in physics for that matter, we are always dealing with the, the rate of change of a certain thing. So what we want to find really is the rate of change or we want to find the, the change of the excessive property of the system uh, over a change in time. So we want to find the rate of change of the excessive property of the system. And using basic differenti differentiating by first principles, this is actually the extensive property of the system at t plus change in t subtract the, sorry, this is not a uh, small change, it's already the extensive property, subtract the extensive property of the system at a time t divided by a change in t. Okay, basic differentiation. Uh, differentiation. So we, we're just converting this into this one over here. Then as you know, later we can you know, do our basic, take the limits and find the, the whole formula. So this one is going to be this equation over here, right? This equation is going to be this equation over here. At the same time, we are going to use our first initial condition, which I believe is satisfactory because, and like I said, at time t, we set the system of particles to coincide with the control volume, so it's the same. So we are, we're going to just rearrange this, and I'll just write it out. Okay, basically, we got this one over here. We are going to make the substitution for b cis, b cis. Okay, let's just use shorthand for now. Um, so it'll be basically this one, control volume, t plus change in t, subtract, control volume, the extensive property of control volume and change in t divided by a small change in time and then we will subtract the b1 t plus a small change in t divided by time and plus b2 t plus a small change in t subtracted, uh, divided by time okay, sorry, I keep on saying subtract okay, divide, divide, divide by time because we are dividing by time for the rate of change now, this is the main equation that we have to start out with and let's just handle each side carefully, okay? Uh, through some perseverance, we should get to our intended result. Now, what is the, the sm small change in t? Sorry, okay, so now we got this one over here, and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to take the limits for the, whole, for the whole equation as change in t tends towards zero. Uh, we want to find a more generalized differential form, or would it be the integral form? Okay, uh, we'll sort that out in a minute. So, this one, okay, um, let's just say the limit as change in t tends towards zero of a small change in bs uh, divided by change in t is equal to, I'm going to write a, a new version of the, the differential calculus, so don't be struck by it, but it's really necessary for our analysis, okay? Or it'll be more precise. You see the difference? Okay, the difference is the d is capital. What does that mean? Well, the d in capital, okay, takes an account of the Lagrangian Lagrangian format of equation, okay, or basically just the Lagrangian equation. Why do I say a Lagrangian equation? Because the Lagrangian equation, right, we are tracking the properties or the parameters of a particle as it moves around the system. That is different from the Eulerian equation. The Eulerian equation is that you just give me a space, I will pick a point in the space, and I will analyze the certain parameters at that, at that point. A basic example, we know that for gases, pressure, temperature, and volume changes at, sorry, pressure, density, and volume, sorry, pressure, okay, pressure and density changes at a certain point. So if we're looking at an Eulerian Eller, point of view, is that we're analyzing the change in the parameter at that point. But for a Lagrangian, we are analyzing a particle as it traces out towards the system. So we're not sticking at a point here. Instead, we're analyzing at this particle the properties of that particle, such as velocity, acceleration, or whatever, volume, as it moves through the system. That is the Lagrangian equation. Well, is that what we need? Well, that is what we need because exactly that's, that's the particles, that's how we describe the system of particles. We're analyzing the system, the particles as it moves throughout the whole space. 
That's why we will put the, the capital D uh, B cis divided by DT. Now, there, there's a term for that which I would like to call again. It's called the material, materialistic, material, I think, material differentiation. Uh, yeah, material dif derivative. It's called the material derivative, this uh, thing over here, okay, capital D. Basically, material derivative is telling us that we are looking at a Lagrangian point of view. In terms of calculations, it does not settle in that much, but it's ready to be more precise, which is, is what I like to be, more precise in our calculations. Okay, so we, we handle this one over here, right? That will equal to the material derivative of B, C, and DT. Let's handle the rest, and hopefully we will progress to somewhere, which, which I hope we do, okay? It's for the benefit of physics, uh, fluid mechanics students. Okay, oh man, I erased the equation. Okay, now I can write it again. C, V, T, plus change in T, take away. B, C, V, uh, T. Okay.